Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about truth functional adequacy. This is one of the three main meta-theoretic claims that we're establishing in the meta-theory unit along with um, the soundness theorem and the completeness theorem. Um, this one is less ambitious than the other two um, and it's going to be our starting point in meta-theory. If you've looked at the textbook, this is section 6.2 of the logic book and it's called in that textbook, Truth Functional Completeness. We're going to be calling it Truth Functional Adequacy just to avoid any any potential confusion with the completeness theorem. Um, so just to clear that up, it's under the textbook under Truth Functional Completeness rather than Truth Functional Adequacy. Okay, so truth functional adequacy concerns the question of whether the connectives of SL are adequate to express all truth functions. Stated otherwise, perhaps in a way that's a little more clear, the question is, can every truth function be expressed by a sentence of SL? We have a vested interest in the answer to this question being yes, right? So we really want SL to be a good system for doing logic. And if it turns out that some truth functions can't be expressed by sentences of SL, um, then that would be really bad because it would mean, for instance, that there might be valid arguments that we can't symbolize and that we wouldn't be able to evaluate using SL. So we really want the answer to this question to be yes, and that would prove that um, SL is an adequate vehicle for doing logic. The one term in this question that you might not have heard of before is truth function. So here's a definition of a truth function. A truth function is an n place function that maps each combination of n truth values to a single truth value. Sounds a little complicated, but it's actually a very simple idea. Here's a truth table. Um, that we're all pretty familiar with. It's the truth table for the conjunction. So uh, just to recall, right, A and B is true if and only if uh, A is true and B is true and false otherwise. This is actually a truth function, right? It's a two place truth function, so N equals two. And that's because it takes two arguments and maps them onto a single value. So it takes two arguments as an input and outputs one truth value, right? Each time it takes in two arguments, maps it onto one value, and it does that in each row, right? So two arguments onto one value means n equals two. So there are going to actually be infinitely many truth functions. Whoops, sorry, you're seeing all about my, <laughs> you're seeing all of my yoga emails. Um, Okay, so there are actually going to be um, infinitely many truth functions, um, and that's because truth tables can be infinitely long. Uh, so this is a two-place truth function. Um, in general, uh, when there are um, n arguments, there are going to be uh, two to the two to the n possible truth functions, right? So when n equals two, there are going to be 16 possible uh, truth functions, which means that there are 16 possible ways that this column could look. But again, because truth tables can be infinitely long, you can input infinitely many arguments, um, there are going to be infinitely many truth functions. Okay, so that's what a truth function is. Now let's move on to talk about what exactly it is we're trying to establish. We want to show that there is at least one sentence of SL that expresses every truth function. So take one of these truth function schemas. The one on the left is a two-place truth function schema. The one on the right in blue is a three-place truth function schema. Um, but what we're trying to show is that given any truth function schema, there's a way of filling it out such that to the left of the vertical bar, we have atomic sentences, and to the right of the vertical bar, we have some sentence, um, some compound sentence that expresses the truth function, right? So there's a way of filling in the question mark so that this is an acceptable truth table. And similarly here, right, there's a way of filling it out such that um, these are atomic sentences over to the left of the bar, and to the right of the bar, we have a compound sentence that makes this um, an acceptable truth table. So we want to prove that for any truth function schema, any way that these tables could look, there's a way of figuring out what should go over top of the question mark. 
In fact, we're going to be proving something a bit stronger than that. We're going to be saying, um, if you take a look at this meta theorem, that every truth function can be expressed by a sentence of SL that contains no sentential connectives other than negation, wedge, and ampersand. So it actually turns out that we don't even need um, the biconditional and the material conditional in order to do this for any um, truth function schema that you are approached with. The proof of this meta theorem is pretty cool. It actually identifies an algorithm that allows you to um, figure out how to fill in a truth function schema no matter what that schema looks like. So we're going to talk about how to use that algorithm. The algorithm, uh, the first two steps of the algorithm are always going to be the same no matter what. There are three possible scenarios for the final step. So in what follows, I'm going to go over three examples, uh, one for each scenario in the final step. And hopefully um, that illustrates how you should go about approaching um, truth function schemas in order to establish truth functional adequacy. So step one, I'll do um, go over the steps using this first example at the bottom here. So step one is to mark the columns of atomic sentences alphabetically. So that means everything to the left side of the vertical bar you want to label alphabetically using an atomic sentence. So because there are two columns to the left of the vertical bar, I'm going to label them A and B. That completes step one. Step two is to form the characteristic sentence for each row. The characteristic sentence is the sentence that's true if and only if its atomic components have the truth values indicated in that row. So this is where the ampersand and the negation are going to come in. So how I like to do it is I like to sort of create the space over to the left of the truth function schema where I'm going to write out the characteristic sentence. And what you want to do is write a conjunction of the two atomic sentences, depending on whether they're true or false. So when A is true and B is true, the characteristic sentence is going to be A and B. When A is true and B is false, the characteristic sentence is going to be A and not B. A is false and B is true, not A and B. A is false and B is false, not A and not B. So, okay, that completes step two. Again, steps one and two are the same no matter what scenario you're dealing with in the third step. So step three is to identify the rows in the truth function schema that have a T to the right of the vertical bar. Here's the first scenario. If there is one such row, that sentence expresses the truth function specified in the schema. So that's the case we have here. We look to the left of the, sorry, to the right of the vertical bar, and we see that there's one row marked with a T. So there is one such row, and that means that that sentence expresses the truth function specified in the schema. So we look at the corresponding characteristic sentence, and we just write that sentence up and label the column with that. So that completes um, us you know, figuring out the sentence of SL that expresses the truth function, right? So that's the first scenario. There's one row with a T marked in the final column. Now, you might find a case in which there are multiple rows marked with a T, right? In this case, there are three. So all the first two steps are the same, right? So the first step is you mark the atomic sentences alphabetically, then you write the corresponding um, characteristic sentence, A and B, not A and B, A and not B, and not A and not B. So now the final step, that's the one that's a bit different. Because there are multiple rows marked with a T, we're going to look at all of those rows, right, and their characteristic sentences, and form an iterated disjunction using them. So an iterated disjunction means you just have to take each sentence and tack on disjunctions in between them. Be careful to make sure that you're using parentheses correctly so that you're writing um, syntactically appropriate sentences of SL. Sometimes you'll see in examples, not in the textbook, but perhaps in lecture or if I'm being sloppy, you might find that um, I'm not using the parentheses appropriately. But do remember that in SL, if you have a binary connective in this case, like for instance, the disjunction, um, you do need to be careful to make sure that it's clear that there are only two, oh, whoops, 
uh, just erase that. There are only two immediate sentential components that are very clearly identifiable using parentheses. Okay, so when there are multiple rows marked with a T, right, in this case there are three, um, you want to form uh, an iterated disjunction using the characteristic sentences of each of the sentences marked with a T. Okay, the final scenario is when there are no rows marked with a T, right? So in this case, we look at the final column and we see that it's completely Fs. In this case, right, we want the, uh, the sentence that expresses this truth function to be a truth functionally false sentence. And remember, truth functionally false sentences are contradictions. Um, so again, we want to build a contradiction, but you have to build a contradiction using the atomic sentences that we have here. So first two steps are again going to be the same. You might find doing all of this a little superfluous when you've um, identified that in the final column it's all Fs, but for the sake of developing good habits, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. Okay, finished the first two steps, right? Labeled my atomic sentences alphabetically, wrote out the characteristic sentence for each row. And now in the third scenario, when there are no rows in the final column with uh, marked with a T, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a truth functionally false sentence by conjoining the characteristic sentence for the first row, A and B, with its negation, not A and B. A and B and not A and B is a contradiction that gets me a truth functionally false sentence, and we can use that sentence to express the truth function specified in the schema. So those are the three possible scenarios that could happen in the, in the third step, right? Either there are no rows that um, are marked with a T in the final column, there are multiple rows marked with a T in the final column, in which case you make an iterated disjunction, or there is one such row in the final column marked with a T, and the characteristic sentence of that row is the sentence that expresses the truth function specified by the schema. In each case, the first two steps are the same. You want to mark the columns of atomic sentence alphabetically and form the characteristic sentence for each row. Again, that might the second step might be a little superfluous, but it's a good idea to develop good habits um, and make this just into a thing that you do. Okay, so that algorithm, algorithm establishes the meta theorem that we were interested in. So we've proved that the connectives of SL are truth functionally adequate. Yay, major meta theoretic uh, breakthrough. One down, two to go.